just like plants will entrap the sunlight and then they will use it to make food. Here they can entrap sunlight but they cannot use that ATP to make food. Hence, they are heterotrophs. Alright, examples would be Halobacterium and Halococcus. Alright. Third and the last category is Thermoacidophytes. Thermo, all of you know, is heat and acid. And finally, philly means to love. So these are the archibacteria which are found in a habitat which is both hot and acidic. Alright? And such a habitat is nothing else but hot sulfur spring. Hot sulfur spring where the temperature is around 80 degrees and pH will be around 2. So it's an ideal habitat for them to grow. Now also they are facultative anaerobes plus they are Chemoautotrophs. Alright? So in that case, what would they do? In the hot sulfur spring, the inorganic sulfur that's present, that's their main source of energy. When they are aerobic, they will be converting the inorganic sulfur into sulfuric acid. But whenever they are anaerobic, they will convert it into H2S. Okay? This is a very important point again. So aerobic condition they will convert the sulfur into sulfuric acid but in anaerobic condition they will convert it into hydrogen sulfide that is H2S. Alright? So examples would be thermoproteus and thermoplasma. Alright, so these are the three categories of archibacteria according to their habitat. They are found in extreme or they are found in complete anaerobic condition. They are found in extreme saline condition and they would be found in hot and acidic condition. Alright, so next topic would be cyanobacteria. Now let us start with cyanobacteria. Okay, now cyanobacteria is the first primitive organism that evolved with oxygenic photosynthesis. Okay, So they are the most primitive organism which started to release oxygen in the earth's atmosphere. So we can say that directly or indirectly all aerobic life forms they have evolved due to the contribution of cyanobacteria. Alright? Now cyanobacteria is commonly known as blue green algae okay bge why is it so because of their characteristic bluish green coloration okay their bluish green coloration and certain similarities with algae like being aquatic just like algae and of course, one of the one of the features I have told you already, oxygenic photosynthesis. And possessing chlorophyll A. Alright, so many similarities allows us to give them a name that is blue-green algae. They have characteristic bluish-green color and they have so many features that are similar with algae. Alright? Now, regarding the structural organization, if we talk about, 
the structural organization wise cyanobacteria are simple and very similar to bacteria and also one thing is very important for you to mark they are mostly gram negative in nature gram negative in nature next cyanobacteria is known to cause the red coloration of red sea okay there is a specific cyanobacteria that's called trichodesmium erythrium it gives characteristic reddish coloration to the red sea which is also called red sea effect it's a very important question as well sometimes the question is given as such that which organism causes red sea effect there will be four options given your answer will be trichodesmium which is a cyanobacteria next cyanobacteria are also known to cause symbiotic associations with various eukaryotic organisms like anabiana azulai this cyanobacteria it causes or it makes a symbiotic association with azola which is a water form all right likewise anabiana cycad it forms symbiotic associations with the coralloid roots of cycad right likewise they are also found endozoically in protozoans which is called cyanel all right so these are major features of cyanobacteria now next let us study their vegetative cell structure so now let us talk about the vegetative cell structure present in cyanobacteria see the cell of the cyanobacteria is very simple and similar to the bacteria that we have discussed in the previous class the outermost layer present in the cell is a slimy layer that's called that is mucilaginous sheath all right it's made up of mucopeptide after this remains the cell wall the cell wall of cyanobacteria is four layered all right it consists of very thin peptidoglycan and hence they are gram negative in nature now internal to the cell wall remains the cell membrane which will be behaving as per the fluid mosaic model that is it will possess phospholipid bilayer with proteins embedded sterol is absent all right now internal to the cell membrane will of course remain the cytoplasm the cytoplasm of cyanobacteria can be divided into two parts the outer peripheral zone is going to be known as chromoplasm all right it consists of colored pigments for photosynthesis whereas the innermost part or the central part which contains the genetic material is known as centroplasm okay the centroplasm is clear and smooth whereas the outer chromoplasm is going to be granular why because it consists of various storage granules there are various types of granules along with 70s ribosomes which remains embedded in the chromoplasm all right so let us see what are the storage granules present the storage granules present are of this five types 
they are cyanopycin granule which will be storing protein, beta granule which will store fats, likewise alpha granule which will store a substance that is similar to glycogen, likewise volutin granules which will be storing phosphate and then polyhedral bodies which will be rich in rubisco. All right. Now, apart from that, we also have the gas vacuole present in the chromoplasm. Okay? This gas vacuole will be filled up with mixture of gases and it would be mainly present to maintain the buoyancy of the cell. That means the cyanobacteria being aquatic and also photosynthetic, they must remain afloat in water to receive sunlight and so that they can photosynthesize. So, this gas vacuole allows the cell to remain afloat on the surface of water. All right? Apart from that, the most important substances that remains embedded in the chromoplasm are these thylakoids. These are the thylakoids which of course are not present inside a chloroplast because this being a prokaryote, all the cell organelles like uh, ER, or Golgi bodies or chromoplast or any such kind of membrane bound cell organelles are absent. Only cell organelle which is present in the cell is 70S ribosome. Okay? So thylakoids are going to be present in the chromoplasm and they contain the pigment that provides the bluish green coloration to cyanobacteria. So these are the pigments which are mainly going to be present in the thylakoids. They are chlorophyll A. Okay, and apart from that, phycobilins, all right? The phycobilins again can be of three types. That is phycoxylin, which is blue in color, allophycoxylin, which is light blue in color, and phycoerythrin, which is red in color. Combination of these three pigments along with the green color pigment, chlorophyll A, will provide this bluish green coloration to cyanobacteria. All right? Now, moving on to the centroplasm. The centroplasm or the central part of the cytoplasm consists of the nucleoid, which is similar to the bacteria in nature. That is, it is double-stranded and circular DNA. All right? And just like in bacteria, you have learned that an infolding of the plasma membrane will remain associated and we call it mesosome, isn't it? A similar infolding will be present in cyanobacteria as well, but we will call it here lamellasome, all right? So this being the structure of the cyanobacteria, a vegetative cell structure of cyanobacteria. Next, let us discuss about the specialized cell present in certain cyanobacteria, that is heterocyst. So now that we have discussed the structure of a vegetative cell in cyanobacteria, let me tell you something regarding a specialized cell that is present in certain cyanobacteria. See, this is the structure of nostoc. In the entire filament of nostoc, you can see that these are the small cells and occasionally at certain sites, these are large cells, isn't it? So these smaller cells, they are the normal vegetative cells. But the large ones, these are the specialized heterocyst. All right? Heterocysts are not going to be present in every cyanobacteria. Those forms of cyanobacteria which possesses heterocysts, they are called heterocystous forms, whereas those do not possess it are known as homocystous forms. Okay? Heterocystous forms are nostoc, tolipotrix, allocera, anabiana, etc. Whereas homocystous forms are oscillatoria, crococcus, spirulina, etc. Alright? Now, let me tell you what is the major function of heterocyst. First thing, as you can already see, heterocysts are much larger in comparison to a normal vegetative cell. That's because they have a very thick cell wall. Sometimes the th cell wall may be 7 to 8 layers thick. All right? This thick layer is going to be very essential for the functioning of the heterocyst. Mainly, heterocyst is a site for nitrogen fixation in cyanobacteria. So those of the cyanobacteria which possess heterocysts, they can fix nitrogen. 
Why? Because inside the heterocysts, they possess an enzyme called nitrogenous. And that allows nitrogen fixation. But the problem with the nitrogenous is that it cannot function in aerobic condition. That means in the presence of oxygen, it cannot be functioning. It can only function in anaerobic state. So to maintain complete anaerobic state inside the heterocyst so that nitrogen fixation is possible, these thick walls will be helpful. The thick walls will allow the nitrogen to diffuse inside, but will not, they will not allow the diffusion of oxygen inside. All right? Also, there is a very, very important point here. All of you listen very carefully. See, cyanobacteria performs oxygenic photosynthesis, isn't it? So that means the cyanobacteria possesses PS1 and PS2, both. And it is PS2 where, if you remember photosynthesis chapter, it is the PS2 where photolysis of water or splitting of water step takes place, isn't it? where the water will be splitted and oxygen will be liberated as a byproduct, isn't it? So the vegetative cells of cyanobacteria, they will possess both PS1 and PS2 and conduct normal photosynthesis, but heterocyst, they will only possess PS1, they will not possess PS2. Why? Because if they possess PS2, oxygen will be liberated and that will disrupt the anaerobic condition and hence functioning of nitrogenous enzyme. All right? So this is a very important point. Heterocysts are sites for nitrogen fixation. They only possess PS1, but they do not possess PS2 to maintain anaerobic condition. All right? So finally, about reproduction of cyanobacteria. So in cyanobacteria, asexual reproduction is mostly prevalent. That is, they will reproduce mainly by binary fission. This will be only possible in the unicellular forms where the cell will divide into daughter cells or fragmentation it will be happening or occurring in the filamentous cyanobacteria like nostox, spirulina, etc. where the trichome or filament of the cyanobacteria will break down into small fragments each fragment then gives rise to new progeny. And even heterocyst as well. Sometimes a heterocyst might germinate and give rise to a vegetative cell, which will then give rise to a new individual. All right? Last is about important or importance of cyanobacteria. There are a few things to mention here. First, oxygenic photosynthesis. Cyanobacteria, as you know, allow oxygenic photosynthesis, thereby they will be allowing evolution of aerobic life forms. Second, is increasing soil fertility. Cyanobacteria, mostly the heterocystis forms like Nostoc, Elucera, Tolipotrix, Anabiana, etc. They are inoculated in the rice fields where they fix nitrogen, thereby increasing the yield. And finally, is spirulina. Spirulina is one such cyanobacteria which is enriched with protein. Okay? Not only protein, it has various important uh, vitamins as well. So that's why it's a complete food for human consumption. So that's why spirulina is termed as SCP, single cell protein. It is dried, powdered, and then sold in the market as one gram tablets. So that much for cyanobacteria. In the next topic, we'll be discussing mycoplasma. So now the last topic under Monera is mycoplasma. See, mycoplasma is a very peculiar prokaryotic structure and why I say it's peculiar is because it has various kind of differences in comparison to the rest of the monerans that we have discussed so far. So, starting with the discovery of mycoplasma, first thing that you must know is that 
in around 1898, there were these two scientists, E. Nogard and E. R. Rocks. E. Nogard and E. R. Rocks, they were investigating the disease bovine pleuropneumonia. Okay? Now, when they were, uh, you know, investigating the pleural fluid of the cattle suffering from bovine pleuropneumonia, they found that there were these tiny, minute, uh, you know, particles or organisms which are present in that pleural fluid. And this they named as PPNO, pleuropneumonia-like organisms. Okay? Later on, in 1910, it was Borel et al. Borel et al. gave them a scientific name that is Asterococcus mycoides. Asterococcus mycoides. Alright? But Finally, in 1929, it was Noak who finally taxonomically categorized them under mycoplasma. Alright, from then on, we denote them as mycoplasma. Alright, now regarding the characteristics of mycoplasma. So regarding general characteristics, first of all, Mycoplasma are the smallest living cell. Smallest living cell. Their size ranges from 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 micrometer. Because they are so small, that's why they can easily pass through bacteria proof filter. passes through bacteria proof filter that's why at first upon discovery they were thought to be virus but later on when it was found that they can be grown in vitro that means in a culture media provided sterile in the media they were again referred as bacteria third point very important they do not have cell wall. So cell wall is absent. Now that is very atypical of monerans, isn't it? So far whatever monerans we have discussed, they have cell wall. But here cell wall is absent. Alright? Now, because cell wall is absent, they are also known as bacteria with their coats off. Bacteria with their coats off. Now, next important thing, they are mostly heterotrophic. And if heterotrophic, then again under heterotrophic, they can be staphylotrophic and Maximum number of times they are parasitic. So they are known to cause disease in both plants and animals including human. Okay? For example, mycoplasma pneumonia is caused by a mycoplasma in human beings. Now, as I have told you already, mycoplasma can be grown in culture media. So, they have a characteristic pattern of colonies that they form in the culture media. Their colonies have fried egg-like appearance. Okay, that means it has a opaque center and translucent periphery. So they bear a characteristic fried egg-like appearance in their colony. Alright, now, 
Next important point is that mycoplasma are facultative anaerobes. That means they can also live without oxygen. Usually they will be found in aerobic conditions, but even without oxygen they can survive. Next, mycoplasma, they are highly pleomorphic. Okay, sometimes they are round, sometimes they are filamentous because they don't have a cell wall or even sterol in their cell membrane. That's why they can keep on shifting from one form to another. Sometimes they are spherical, sometimes they are filamentous, sometimes coccoid, etc. So that's why they, they are also known as jokers of the plant kingdom. Alright? Next, another very very important difference pro about mycoplasma in comparison to the rest of the monera is that the genetic material of mycoplasma is of course DNA but the DNA is not double stranded and circular rather it is double stranded and linear. Alright? So that is a very, very important difference. Now, another very important point regarding mycoplasma from exam's point of view is that because mycoplasma don't have cell wall, but they are infectious. So in case they cause some infection, this infection cannot be treated with wall attacking antibiotics like penicillin. Rather, they can be only treated with some metabolic inhibitors like tetracycline, chloramphenicol, or erythromycin, etc. So, do remember, while attacking antibiotics cannot treat mycoplasmal infections so last much is not known about mycoplasmal reproduction but we know that they reproduce by formation of certain small units inside their cells and they are called elementary bodies so reproduction Occurs by elementary bodies formation. Alright, so these are certain important of points related to mycoplasma. So with that, Kingdom Monera being completed. In the next class, we'll start with Kingdom Protista. Thank you.